So today we're headed back to the Lennox mine. Uh, this is kind of north of the uh, Suquamish area, North Bend area. And we were here last week checking out the lower adit when we found some geodes. So we decided to bring a rock, a couple rock hounds with us, to see what they thought about it. But we had a bit of an issue getting here because as you can see, the river is much, much higher than it was last week. And so they, there was no way we could find across it. So we had to start down by a bridge farther south. And so we're gonna hike in a little ways. Alright, we made it back to the Lennox mine. This is the main adit. Just yeah, like... We're gonna use that to wash off the rocks, do some more sampling. Here we are. Welcome to the Lennox mine. Should we get lights out? Yeah. Yeah, just come on in the portal area so we can get drier. At least we won't freeze. Misty in here today. So this back section is where we spent most of our time last week. This is where all the geodes that we found are. Yeah, if you look at one of those samples of like the the bubbly texture looking crystals, if you look closely, you'll notice that. Let's see if we can find one. Colin, do you have one? No. I have a bunch in my pocket. Let's see. There's some on the wall. Plenty of ones that have fallen down. Yeah. But if you look closely at that, you can see that that orange crystal material is growing off of already grown quartz crystals. Yeah. It's definitely secondary. So it almost makes me think there's some kind of like geologic change in minerals. Well, I guess it's like sulfur contaminated quartz or something. Because yeah, the quartz would have already been grown and then maybe some kind of a change. Okay. Uh -huh. we, we, yeah, we, we'll need some analysis on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of see the quartz crystals underneath. Shiny like pyrite. Oh, yeah. I have a great example. What is that? Is that Chalco pyrite? That, yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, and there's that. This is a great example. Oh, you see nice. that like really lustry uh, silver stuff? Yeah. I think that might be arsenopyrite. Oh, okay. Ar that's like 43 or 46% arsenic. Hey, here, here. It's like the... <laughs> the yeah, tasty. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you see how the quartz crystals yeah, the tips are all poking through? Yeah. It's pretty damn cool. Alright. Alright, let's set up. Watch the, uh... Oh, did you just split that open? Yeah. Like on this case? Uh, it was on this. Side. It came from one of these pieces, yeah. <laughs> you good? <laughs> you good? Where are you going in there, boy? <laughs> Getting excited. <laughs> yeah. That's got a good little uh, termination on it, too. Mm -hmm. Over. Where did you get that? Term terminated crystal. Oh. oh, yeah. You got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got it in there now. <laughs> Damn. There you go. You use the rock hammer actually as a wedge? Yeah. Well. You're not supposed to use it as like a like a wedge. You're not supposed to hit the rock hammer. You use this. Oh, to I, I mean, pry. like oh, a, like to pry. Yeah. Yeah, Pro, like a crowbar, I guess. I meant. All right. It's coming now, huh? Uh. Oh. 
Oh, fuck. That's a good piece. Whoa. <laughs> 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 What's in here? Like, they're, 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 yeah, they're making this warm white. Like there's there. this one rock in there. Yeah, the like cameras. And I felt like warm. So, yeah. I chipped that off there. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's so, so, I actually. Let's check out some of these ores. <laughs> That's a nice hexagonal uh, quartz crystal right there. Look, see the hexagon? Yeah. All right, so what do we got, Colin? This, uh, these rocks right here uh, show you uh, what we've mostly been finding, which is uh, a lot of pyrite, and the pyrite occurs in uh, nice concentrated uh, veins here, and uh, sometimes that uh, looks like little deposits that are pretty smooth like this one. Sometimes it's... Uh, larger and uh, more illustrious crystals, and sometimes it, uh... See, is that in the camera? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it can be just veins that uh, fall alongside veins of uh, other uh, minerals or the rocks in here. But uh, in addition, uh, there's also these uh, quartz and um, sort of associated yellow crystals that uh, grow nearby the quartz. You can see in this sample right here, this a hexagonal quartz crystal that is uh, flanked by these orange, uh, you know, fish egg sized uh, crystals that are very brittle and uh, rough. And we think that these crystals, because they occur right next to all the quartz samples uh, in this mine, might be some derivative of quartz having to do with all the sulfur we find in this room. After all, it stinks. But um, that's all we know for now. And um, we can do further analysis and consultation with the uh, geologist or maybe some chemical analysis using something like iron out to uh, see what we can get out of it. Oops. There we go. Yeah, so we're shining a black light at the wall here and this this orange crystal that's growing on top of the quartz is fluorescing. So that's kind of interesting. It ended up what is it, brecciating from yeah. something? And then backfilled. Yeah. God, I need a better phone. Sorry, I gotta spy my finger. Here we go. I can't get a good picture of that stuff. So. Yeah, just compared to like the rest of the wall, it's definitely fluorescing. What do you think uh, caused it to grow on top of the preformed quartz? Do you think it's possible that there was some kind of geologic change in the mineral content of the rock? Honestly, I don't have a great guess for that. I assume that basically what happened is uh, the quartz crystals grew in the pockets, and then, um, yeah, there's some, like, the geology shifted, and then um, probably with the introduction of maybe the sulfur or something, and that caused the... Chell said I need to grow kind of like with this orange color. Um, or maybe the iron actually, it could be the iron. It probably is actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. The orange is probably from the iron, if I had to guess. Um, but I also could be wrong, it could be something completely different uh, that I am not aware of. About how long would you say it takes for those quartz crystals that we saw that were roughly like half centimeter, centimeter in length to form? Form? I have no idea, honestly. That's uh, we got to look a into that. Of, like time scale for uh, for geology. Because if we could, if we could figure that out. We could r determine roughly when that geologic change right. occurred, and maybe we could we could see if it corresponded to any kind of like any event in Earth's history. Yeah. For the local um, area. I think it might be a little bit hard to tell because I, I think like. It could be something that's purely localized to this area, like it could be a stream diverted and then brought a bunch of different mineral material Yeah, uh, you know, through like an aquifer in the cave or something. That's a good point. The whole area was um, underwater, underwater. Oh. yeah, during well, the last so definitely ice been, age. That would definitely explain the gypsum. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty confident about that then, knowing with that piece of context. How does, uh, how does gypsum form with relation to that? Um, I don't, I forget what makes up gypsum as a mineral, but I know that it just tends to form, especially like if you're talking like on Mars, for instance, they find actually gypsum 
in uh, some of the ancient lake beds mm. that have dried up. For Interesting. Instance. It's like a, a telltale, essentially, of like of water. Where there was water at one point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we've seen a lot of that, and we we saw that first in the King and Kinney mine, and then it was all over the Cleopatra mine, and so it's pretty common around here. It, I, th I think it is. It's like it's it's a really uh, like it's not rare to form. I, I know it's made of, like it's not made of any uh, like rare elements or anything. It's super common, um, and uh, it forms pretty easily. I don't I'm trying to remember what it like what it is. But I don't offhand. I can look that up later, though. Uh, that might explain some. Maybe that might explain some of the other uh, crystal phenomena yeah. here. Interesting. Yep. More research to be done. But uh, that concludes our trip for the day for the Lennox mine. This is our second trip, and uh, probably the last since we're going to pull some ore samples out of here and just do the analysis back uh, back at home where we have access to a little bit more testing equipment and and various chemical treatments that we can do to try to figure out what it is. Well, that's it. That's about it. So on the way back, we stumbled across this little prospect. Only about 30 or so feet, not too big. But this was probably another one of the prospects corresponding to the Lennox mine. That would be my guess. Pretty cool, though. But... Right on.